morning or it's getting close to afternoon all right um i'm gonna drop some more content today uh from the dr umar interview on the hardly initiated podcast i'm gonna drop some more content um one of the things that i have to explain to people quite often good morning good oh excuse me good morning good morning good morning one of the things I have to explain to people about me and uh, kind of about how I operate in the world and, and how I think is you need to understand something about me. I do not have to align 100% with another person, with another content creator, with another influencer, whoever, right? With another personality or whatever. I don't have to align 100% with that person to respect their thoughts, their opinions, right? I grew up in a whole nother generation. I grew up in a generation of critical thinkers. I grew up in a generation where uh, you know, we learned about tolerance. We learned the importance of being tolerant with others, how to disagree without being disagreeable. Like I grew up in a whole nother generation that, that a lot of modern day people, you see, y'all don't understand that. Okay, You don't understand that. It's like you have to be spoon fed everything. Like if we don't spoon feed you everything, okay, you're like, well, what about this? And what about that? Okay. But see, critical thinkers, we are able to piece out, we are able to pull out things from a person, from you know their rhetoric or whatever it is they're talking about. We don't have to align with them 100% to agree with something that they said, okay? There are a lot of people out here who are making great points. They're making, they have great ideas and they're making great points. And I may not agree with 100% of what they're talking about. I may not agree with their lifestyle. They may not be fellow Christians. They may believe in something totally different than me. That does not mean that that point, <laughs> that specific point, that specific thought, that specific ideology, it doesn't mean it's crap. It doesn't mean I should throw it away. So let me tell you what modern day people do. Modern day people say, because that person's Candace Owens, because that person's Donald Trump. Yeah, I'm going to trigger y'all today. Because that person's fill in the blank, who, whoever y'all don't like. Because that person's Yada. Because that person's Dr. Umar and this and that. Because that person believes in polygamy. Because that person isn't Christian. Because that person's Muslim. Because that whatever. Fill in the blank. Like if that person and their lifestyle or their or because that person's gay or whatever. Because that person and their lifestyle or their ideology doesn't 100% line up with y'all's, you say everything out of their mouth is crap. Everything out of their mouth is BS. Oh, that's me. Oh, Candace Owens, ain't nobody trying to hear what she talk about. Oh, it's Donald Trump. Ain't nobody. Oh, that person's not Christian. Oh, that person's gay. Oh, that person. It's like everything they say is now crap. But that is, that's where we are. That's where we are in modern day society. Like you all don't know how to disagree without being disagreeable. You all don't know how to be tolerant. You all don't know how to accept that. Yeah, there's lots of, and especially now, what trips me out is there are more people now that have more different views than there ever has been. And now y'all just, uh, 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 you know? <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So yeah, it's beyond annoying. <laughs> it's, it's annoying. It's beyond it. I, I can barely stand it. I can barely be online. Y'all, I can barely be online because it's like, dang, y'all are so sensitive. Like everything, if everything don't line up just perfectly, just right, y'all can't to tolerate it. You can't stand it. And that's why a lot of people are not winning. Y'all are not winning. Yeah, right is right. That's it. And and how about this? Ooh, thank you, sir. Is it freely, Yoli? Thank you. Or is it a lady? I can't see. I'm sorry. You could be a lady. I'm sorry. Um, but thank you. This is what I like to tell people. I am and will forever be on the side of righteousness. Like if it's right, if it's good, if it's moral, if it's common sense, it don't matter who's saying it. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Free Leoli. It don't matter who's saying it. I'm on the side of right. I'm on the side of righteousness. I'm on the side of morality. I'm on the side of good versus evil. That's all you need to know about Anita. That's it. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap that up right there. Anita will always stand on the side of what's right. I will always be on the side of righteousness. So if you're Muslim and you're righteous, we good. If you're, if, if you're, ooh, mm, I'm going to trigger some of y'all. If you're Republican and you're righteous, we good. Okay? If you're standing on the side of what's right and what's good and what's moral, okay? That's the side I'm on. So for Republicans who say, hey, we don't support abortion. Okay. <laughs> to me, that sounds right. That sounds good. That sounds moral. I, you know, why, why would you want a society to keep get, the women to keep getting pregnant and keep, you know, killing the baby? Why? And y'all, see, this is what nobody is telling y'all. See, that's not good for your body. But see, nobody's telling you that. Nobody's telling you how these abortions are tearing up your body. But, but I digress, because all you care about is getting rid of the baby. But you harming yourself in the process. But I digress, okay? So I don't completely trigger everybody on here right now. But I am on the side of doing what's right, and I forever will be, and I don't care who don't like it, and you can say whatever you want to say, because I've already told y'all, this is the year of the block party. This is the year of me showing you the door. I will not take no foolishness this year, and I haven't. I've already gotten rid of a whole lot of people on my platform. I will not do it. I will not do it, and you can call it whatever you want. I want this to be a place of peace. I want this to be a place where intellects and intellectual mature people have dialogue and conversation that's respectful, and if you cannot stay in that lane, I'm going to, I'm going to invite you to the door. You will be invited to the block party, Okay. So understand that. All right. She says it's hard to receive certain messages because of the messenger. But if we close our eyes and listen, it is what it is. I agree. And that's that's who I've always been. That's who I've always been. Thank you. I've always been that person. Doesn't matter. OK. And yes, there are things about Dr. Umar and his lifestyle that I don't agree with. But let me tell you, all he dropped some bars. <laughs> he dropped some bars and I will be posting it today. So I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your comments, your feelings about what he said. He dropped some bars. Okay. I may not be in agreement of polygamy, uh, him having two wives, and all, but guess what? I ain't marrying him. So <laughs> he ain't my husband. That's what that's called. It's not, that don't work for me. That don't work for my lifestyle, but guess what? I'm not married to him. So what does it matter? So, no, you know, I tell people this all the time, like to some to some regard, I am libertarian. Uh, which is, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do, you know, and I, there ain't a whole lot I can say about it. Uh, it's about the message, not the messenger, precisely. But a lot of people, they struggle with that. They really struggle. And, and to me, that's a small minded person. You are a small minded person if you can't, you know. Close your eyes to who is saying it and listen to what they're saying. But he dropped bars. I'm going to repost some things. And like I said, I don't agree with him 100%. There's a whole lot of things about what he's talking about that I don't agree with. Um, as a woman who's black, you know, I don't necessarily buy into the whole, um, you know, staying with your own race and all of that. Because like I said, I just believe in the human race, you know. And I do believe there is good in people of every race, every ethnicity, every, color. you know, I, I do. I do. I'm an Aquarian um, and I'm, you know, a big believer in, you know, the utopian, humanitarian, like all of that's a part of my sign. That's, and I, that's me. That's me <laughs> for people who don't believe in it. But when I read it, it's like, yeah, a lot of that stuff is me. That is me. That is how I operate. That's how I do things. I just want I just want people to, to be together in love, right? I love it to me is like, that's the ultimate for me. Love is the ultimate for me. It doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter who's giving it, where it's coming from. I just need people to return to love. And 
to me, whether that people like black love, white love, Asian love, Hispanic love, whatever, Indian love, whatever. I just need people to return to love and find love wherever you can find it. Wherever you can find love, find it. That's what that's what I'm on. But I get his whole pan-Africanism and, you know, wanting black people to stay with their own kind and all of that. I get it. I have technically uh, never dated outside of my race. Um, and again, you know, I've always joked with my friends and told them that, you know, a lot of white men don't care for me. They're just not attracted to me or don't like me. Uh, that's what I that's what I think. That's what I feel. Uh, I have a lot of uh, white male friends, which is interesting. I have a lot of white male friends and we're cool and they talk to me about other women, but <laughs> they're not interested in me. So I I don't know why that is, but I'm just I just want peace. I just want love. You know, I just want us to wake up. I want us to do better. I want us to be uh, open to different things and ideas and thinking and all of that. And uh, I'm never going to like shut down an entire population. You know, that's just not what I'm about. I'm just not about that. I want you to be wise, you know, and I want you to, to have wisdom and discernment when choosing anybody, anybody of any race, anybody of any race can abuse you, use you, you know, so be wise in your choosing, but you know, and, and his thoughts on, you know, having two wives and all of that. Again, I'm not married to him. So that's not something that's ever going to affect me, but that's, that's what he wants to do. Okay. And he'll find two women that'll want to do it with him. But he dropped some major bars and things that I've been saying about, you know, whether it's our community or just people in general, because a lot of times when I'm talking about love and dating and relationships, I'm talking about people in general. I, I don't focus specifically on the black family and the black community because I think I would hurt too many people's feelings. Like, I think I would be too rough with it, too harsh with it. So I don't just focus on black people. I don't just have black people that follow my platform. I try to give people common sense, common sense advice about relationships, regardless of the race, regardless of the ethnicity, regardless of the religion, regardless of whatever. The things that I'm telling you are clinically sound. They've been studied. It's data. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. And some of it's biblical. Some of it's biblical. I do give a lot of biblical advice because I'm a Christian. But honestly, if I solely focused on the black community, I would hurt a whole lot of y'all's feelings. <laughs> like I wouldn't have no platform. Y'all would run me off of here. Because yeah, that community, oh my God, it's like riddled with trauma and foolishness. And I mean, just so much nonsense, so much ridiculous nonsense. It's crazy. She said, well, well, what was he talking about? I need you to go to the Hardly Initiated podcast page on YouTube and you're going to have to be patient. That interview is like three and a half hours long. So you're going to have to be patient, very patient. It's worth it. It's worth it to, to have the knowledge and your spirit grow. It's worth that three and a half hours. And so what I tend to do when I'm watching interviews that long, I will piecemeal them. So I'll say, okay, I got 30 minutes. I'll go back to it for 30 minutes. I'll take notes or I'll shoot, you know, video of it. And then I'll go off and do something else. And then I'll come back to it. Let me, I got an hour and I'll listen to it. If I'm driving in the car, I will listen to it for 30 minutes or an hour. Um, yeah, she said most of their interviews are two to three hours. All, all convos are amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Spiritual world gives a snippet of it. Yeah, it was amazing. And he dropped so many bars. He dropped so many bars. And I was just like, yep, yep, yep. But see, that's what be getting people all riled up and getting people all mad. But he told no lies. One of the things that he said was that people who, the most broken people, the most traumatized people are people who are sexually promiscuous. And so um, I have a follower who says sex is a poor man sport. She always says that in the comments. And she is correct. You know, people who are not about anything deep, people who are not anything ab about anything higher or spiritual, sex is their sport. That is the cheapest dopamine hit on the planet. It's sex. Sex in all of its forms. So whether it's pornography, whether it's sleeping with a person, whether it's masturbation, sex is the cheapest form of dopamine that is here on the planet. And when a person, man or woman, so I'm going to talk about man or woman, when a man or woman utilizes sex for sport, 
use utilizes sex for um like medicine like he what they think is healing which is really not you know they utilize sex to, for validation they utilize sex and all things sexual you know to feel good about themselves to heal oh i broke up and the fastest way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else that is the most toxic twisted advice that we offer but that that is the toxic trauma ridden people and it's men and women he talked about women but it's men too men who are out here giving their life force seed to just anybody you know sticking their penis in just anybody and 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 making the the very women that they say they don't want oh high body count high body count but yet you're sticking your penis inside of women and creating the high body count make it make sense it doesn't and ladies oh my god i just don't know how many times i'm going to have to say this like i'm going to lose my voice telling y'all to stop having casual sex let me make this clear. If you are not in an exclusive, committed relationship with a man who loves you and who you love, we could go to the ultimate form, which is marriage. Okay? For those of you who are not going to wait until marriage, and there's a whole lot, most of you are not, at least require that you be exclusive and committed with each other, in love, I love this person and they love me, I think they have my best interests at heart and I have their best interests, at, at least let it be that. If it is not that, if it is an ex, if it is an old boyfriend, if it is a, a situationship, if it is a guy at your job, if it is, please stop giving your, your womb and your vagina to these men. Stop. Just stop. Like, I don't have any other way to say it. Just stop. Do the work so that you don't need to have that as a form of validation for yourself. Just stop. Like, I've gone years, years because of the inner work that I've done. A man putting his dick in me doesn't make me any more of a woman. It doesn't. That does not make me attractive. That does not make me... Fine. That does not make me, uh, uh, oh, she's, va she's more valuable. She's wanted. A man putting his dick in me doesn't mean any of that. Any of that. I am wanted. I am desired. I am fine. I am valuable. I am worthy. And none of that comes from a man putting his dick in me. So please do the inner work. A man calling my phone, a man texting me, a man coming over to pick me up and taking me out. Okay, those are all wonderful, lovely things. Okay, and you know me, I love men. I have nothing against men. But if you are making that mean that that's, you know, oh, I'm a woman when I'm with, no, you're not. You're a woman all on your own. One is a whole number. I, I just don't know how many times I'm going to have to say this. And the women between 18 and 25, 30, like they really believe this. That if some man is not giving me attention online, on social media, that's why I got to be half dressed and got to have my behind to the camera. If I never, God knows, if I never see another woman with her butt to the camera looking over her shoulder. If I never saw that again, it would be too soon. Really? Like, we have to do better. We have to do better. Please do the work. Please, I beg you. Because, and you know what? This, this, this platform is for women, which is why I talk to women a lot. I believe we're the solution. And like I said, a lot of men, well, we're the solution. We need, okay, and y'all do that. Y'all keep stepping up. Y'all keep, you know, checking each other. I'm going to check women. I'm going to check the women and tell them to stop letting y'all in stop letting y'all in because i believe that once we're strong enough to do that things are going to change things are going to change but stop letting men in because you it's, it's it's the craziest thing it's like this sick form of validation 
that if a man ain't calling my phone, if a man ain't, you know, hearting my photo, if a man ain't putting fire emojis, if a man ain't in my DM, somehow you are less than. That's a lie from hell. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay? Last I checked, I'm amazing. Last I checked, I love myself. Last I checked, I am valuable and I am worthy. And it's not based on my age. It's not based on my race. It's not based on, you know, having some uh, physically altered physical attributes. It's not based on my breast size, my butt size. It's not based on any of that. There is a whole soul, a whole spirit housed inside of this body. That's dope as hell. Okay? That's what that's what you can't see. But come close. Feel the energy. Feel the vibe. Come close to me and you'll feel it. You'll see it. Feel the aura. That's what we got to get back to. But he said it. He straight up told this young lady. He said, look, I don't care if don't nobody else tell you this. I'm about to tell you this. You hold out. You wait as long as you can to sleep with a man. I was like, yes, finally, a man willing to tell the truth. You hold out. That man will respect you for not opening your legs by the first, second, or third date. You wait. You wait. You vet the man. You see what he's about. You see if he's willing to invest in you. And remember, whenever I say that word, stop saying it's about money. It's not about money. That's where y'all's mind is. My mind is not about money. And you paying our bills. And now men don't want to pay for dates. Well, if you're not giving out sex, we're not paying for dates. Because y'all are so, ugh, y'all, y'all almost made me cuss. Y'all almost made me cuss. Y'all are so transactional. That's why you go there. Because it's not about spirit. It's not about soul. It's not about all the other things that a person could possibly give you. It's transactional. Give me your body, I'll give you some money. Give me your body, I'll take you out to eat. You know, uh, you you buy me a bag, I'll give you some booty. Like, that's that's all y'all about. That's all y'all about. Nobody wants to find out who anybody really is. You don't care about any of that. But ladies, shut it down. Shut it down. Sh- close the shop and shut it down. And 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 really, really cultivate the inner you. Cultivate the vibe. Cultivate the spirit. Cultivate the soul of you. Like the, the guy said in one of his videos, okay, ladies, if if something happened to your vagina, you got in a terrible accident and your vagina was injured or you couldn't, you know, have sex anymore, what else? What else you got? I live in that world all day, every day, because like I said, I'm not sleeping with you. I'm not sleeping with no men. I'm going to give you everything else that is Anita that's not about my vagina. I'm, so that's the world I live in already. <laughs> like, I'm not giving you that. So, okay, I'm going to give you everything else, and it is a lot. It is a value to you, but, yeah, I'm not giving you that. But really think about that. What else do you have to offer? Come on. Like, we have got to do better, but he talked about that. The realization comes with a certain level of self-awareness. I agree, and a lot of people don't have that. So he told the young lady, you know, a lot of different things. I'm going to repost it. Um, and then he talked about the most broken and traumatized people are promiscuous, and he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And that's why I tell men and women, it's so easy, especially the men. I say, gentlemen, if you get an okie doke, you an idiot. No, I like, cannot be honest. You an idiot. You don't want to learn. You don't want to grow. You want to stay stuck and stuck on stupid, as they say. You're an idiot. Because to me, it's easy to see a woman of value and a woman that has no value. It's so easy. This is like the easiest time in history to vet a woman to see if she's a good woman. I mean, my God, we have social media. That'll tell you everything you need to know right there. So I'm going to be honest, dudes. If y'all are still confused, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it. You're an idiot. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. You, you, you are led around by your little head. You are, you know, probably one of these people Dr. Umar is talking about. You are broken and traumatized. And so sex means everything. If a woman isn't sleeping with you by date three, oh, my God, she doesn't have real desire for me. Oh, my God. Like, 
<laughs> make it make sense. But yet, you don't want a bunch of thoughts. You don't want a bunch of 304s. Your high, high body count matters. Like, what? Like, critically think. Really think. Those two things don't go together. Oh, my God. I just, like I said, y'all hurt my throat. I, I just get so tired. I get so tired of talking to people about the same thing over and over. It's not hard. And men, it's not hard to vet them either. Keep your legs closed. Keep it feminine. Keep it fun. Keep it friendly. Keep it flirty. Right? You'll let a man know that you're interested in him. And yes, you're not a prude. I'm not a prude. When you become my man, when I'm married to you, oh, it's whew, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. There ain't no pornography movie. There ain't no strip show, strip club that can compare to what we gonna do. It can't even compare. It ain't even. It can't even compare to what you gonna receive when you're my man. Once you my man, once you my husband, you gonna be like, man, I can't. I, I I'm calling out of work. You know, I can't go to work. Anita's like, is crazy. But again, that's not something that I'm out here throwing around like a frisbee, throwing or throwing around like a tennis ball for everybody to hit it. See. That's why you ain't, that, that's why you just, well, she not, she not doing this and she not doing it because you're not my man. I'm not throwing tennis balls out for everybody to hit it. I'm not throwing frisbees out for everybody to, to catch it. No, that's not how that works. Okay. So I can, I can wait. I'm patient. I, and again, I'm not so broken and traumatized that sex is how I check the temperature of a man. Like sex is how I determine how a man feels about me. No, no, it's not. And a man could tell me, yeah, I'm going to wait until we're married. And I'd be like, great, great. I have other ways to determine if we're sexually compatible. And, and I utilize them. And I teach people how to utilize them. I teach men how to utilize, you know, the tools that I have to determine your sexual compatibility. But y'all don't want to learn that. Y'all don't want, how many times have I been in coaching sessions trying to teach men, this is how you can determine a love, uh, the woman's sexual compatibility to you. And this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to say. These are the questions you're going to ask. This is what you, that's it. And they don't want to do that because if the woman is not throwing it at them, letting them hit it, well, we not sexually compatible. She's a prude and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Same with women. I teach women the same skills, the same tools. But see, it's like you want to be spoon fed. You do not want to critically think. You do not want to wait and be patient. And that's a woman's greatest downfall. A woman's greatest downfall right now is the lack of patience. You all cannot wait. You cannot be patient. You cannot pace the, the relationship or pace things out. You cannot stand the fact that, oh, my God, the man is starting to pressure me for sex. You can't. You, you just can't stand it. Oh, and he's starting to talk about, OK, so that's called so what? Him pressuring you for sex is called your problem. That's his problem. And that's what I tell men. Any man that's pressured me for sex, I'm like, oh, that sounds like something you you, know, you might want to work through. Well, well, what are you talking about? Yeah, that sounds like a you problem. That sounds like something you need to get control over. Because Anita is very clear about what my standards are, what my boundaries are. And now you know what they are. And then you're now going to have to decide, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I, I need sex so bad. I need sex within the first two weeks, within the first 30 days, and I'm just going to go off and get it from someone else. And you are going to now add to that person's body count, add to your body count, add to their trauma, add to your trauma. Yeah, you can have at it. You can have at it. Last I checked, I'm okay with that. Because you're not going to bring that trauma and that mess over here. Thank you, K Jackson 863 Thank you. But mm -mm, you're not bringing that mess over here. I'm good. I'm good. And I am patient. Look, I asked God the last last year's word was patience. When I tell y'all, God is funny. I, so that was last year's word was patience. And I just prayed and prayed at the top of the year. You know, Lord, just teach me how to be patient. Teach me how to be patient. Oh, my God. And when I tell you all oh, hell broke loose last year. And I was like, what is happening? Why, what is, why is this happening? He said, oh, you wanted patience. You wanted to learn about patience. And he gave me so many trials and tribulations that I had to just sit and wait. 
He brought people in my life. Well, why aren't we? Mm -mm. I had to wait. You talk about a waiting season. <laughs> All last year. Look, I was I was seeing somebody, that relationship ended, and then I had to wait. And man, it hurt my little soul. <laughs> you know, it hurt my heart to wait, to sit still. And to feel all of them feelings, it hurt my heart. But he said, hey, you said this year's word was patience. So that's what I'm teaching you. And I, I got it. I got it. I finally was like, darn, you messing me up. But I finally got it. She says, the Bible says tribulation works patience. Oh, my God, does it ever. When I tell y'all last year, mm -mm -mm, this hurt my little soul over and over on every front. Business, personal, every front, every front there could be, there was trials and tribulations. My children and my family, every, everywhere, everywhere I turned, it just would not, it just would not loose me. <laughs> it just would not. But like I said, I asked for it. I asked for it. This year's word is compassion. And I know he going to bring people into my life. I know he going to bring situations and circumstances into my life in which I must show compassion. And he has already shown me that I must have a measure of compassion for myself, for myself. I have messed up. I've made some dumb choices. I've made some mistakes. And I have to learn how to forgive myself. I have to have compassion. I have to say, Anita, okay, you're, you're not perfect. You make mistakes, you make missteps, and you, you have bad judgment about certain things. You let people stay too long. You, you believe in people a little too much. And those people do not have your best interests at heart. But I have to show myself compassion. But do the work. Do the inner work. Like he dropped some major bars. I need y'all to have patience with that interview. But a lot of y'all need that interview. Especially the women. Y'all need that interview. And like I said... I don't align 100% with everything he's talking about. But he, the things that I did, the things that I agree with, I will be posting today. And they're things that you've already heard me talk about. Sex is a poor man's sport. It's a, it's a broken, traumatized man and woman's sport. Women, and what he said, women are out here having sex, not because they love sex. I can't, I've been saying this forever. Women are not enjoying sex. Fellas, the way you enjoy sex. I have been saying this forever. Stop saying that men and women having sex with each other is a mutual exchange. It is not. I've been saying this forever. And you will not listen. You as men think because 99% of the time when you have sex, you have an orgasm. A man is getting energy from a woman that a woman is not getting from a man. A man is 99% chance of having an orgasm. A woman, 38%. That's a big, big difference. Women are having sex for love. That's what we've heard for centuries. Women use sex to get love. Men use love to get sex. We've been saying that for centuries. Women want love. Women want care. Women want compassion. Women want to be seen and heard. Women want validation. They want attention. They want a lot of things, but I'm going to keep it real. If they could get it in other ways other than sex, they would and they are. That's what social media is about. The reason why women are so gung-ho and gaga over social media is because it's cheap dopamine that they technically don't have to have sex for. Mm, you ever think about that? Wow, I found a way to get cheap dopamine to get attention and validation and that little heart and that little fire emoji and those DMs. I finally found a way to get it without having to open my body up to these men. I love it. Ooh, OnlyFans. Oh, my gosh. Not only can OnlyFans make me feel good about myself, it's cheap dopamine. It can make me rich. I technically don't have to have sex with these men. I love it. And y'all are, are so ignorant to that fact. Men are so ignorant to that fact. It's like sheep being led to the slaughter. Y'all are supporting this crap. 
Every time you put that heart, every time you put that fire emoji, every time you put that peach emoji or, or, the, or the eggplant emoji or whatever emoji you send, you're feeding a monster. And what's so crazy is, like I said, the women have finally figured out, okay, I can get fed, 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 but I don't have to give you my body. I don't have to have physical sex with you anymore. And it's, it's, it's a crazy world that we live in. It's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. But the energy exchange is not the same, gentlemen. Y'all keep talking about, oh, we're, we're having sex with y'all like y'all having sex with us. Sir, 30, thir only 38% of us are having orgasms from the sex. A lot of us don't have any orgasm. A lot of us are in pain. It hurts. Doesn't feel good. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's, it's getting poked for 20 minutes. That's what it is for a lot of us. I hate to break it to you. I hate to break your little ego bubble. But it is not a fair exchange. You, we are an energy dumping ground for you. We are the receiver of you. You are getting up from the sex, energized and feeling great and, and using the feminine essence to go out here and do things. And we are the harborers of your trauma and your brokenness and your... Mm, mm. But yet, oh, you know, it's it's a fair exchange. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And can I be really real? Even for a man, like you are still soul tied. Y'all, y'all don't believe in soul ties. You don't, y'all don't believe that, oh, you know, uh, women can't bond when they have a lot of sex partners. Men can't either. Men can't either. You all are going through the exact same thing. You don't know how to properly bond with a woman if you've had a hundred partners. You can't now get married and be properly uh, monogamous with that woman because of your past. The science does not lie. Okay. The same thing is happening to you all. But no, no, it's different. It's different. And you're right, because we're the receiver. We are more prone. We are more prone. That's what the science shows. Doesn't mean men are not prone. It means we are more prone to struggle in that area because we're the receiver of you. You are entering us. You are depositing into us. Yes, that is true. Science supports that. But men also, again, when you practice being a dirty, filthy whore, you're not going to now get find the love of your life and settle down and be a perfectly monogamous and faithful husband. That's not how that works. You are, you know, you've been practicing for many years being a dirty, filthy whore. That's what you're going to continue to be. And you're going to struggle. And every time you want to make tender love to your wife, you're going to think of the thousands of women, the, the freaky women, the crazy women, the, the thousands of women you've jerked off to, all of that is going to meet you in your bedroom, sir. Oh, this is boring. You know, having having basic missionary sex is boring. She's not doing this or that, or she's not letting me go in the back of her, and she's not doing this or that, and she's not doing backflips, and she's not, you know, letting me, you know, choke her out and all this. Yeah. You can't even enjoy normal, healthy sex anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening out here. You can't have normal loving, look in my eyes, missionary, you know, talk to me, tell me you love me. You can't, that, that ain't going to do it for you. That's not going to do it for you no more. There are men out here that don't look at a woman, don't look in her eyes, don't look at her face. They pull, they put their face to the side. Like they close their eyes so tightly. And guess why? Because they're imagining all these other OnlyFans women and pornography women. That's what they're thinking about. They're not even there with you. There are so many reasons, ladies, to please close your legs. Please close your legs. You're not being made love to. You're being screwed. You're being smashed. You're being pounded. What else? What's the other one they say? Yeah. I mean, think of all the violent words they use for lovemaking now. They don't even say lovemaking because you're not being made love to. Most of these women don't love you. Please, please have a standard. Have a boundary that says, do you even love me? Do you even love me? Like, I've said that to men that are like, yeah, how come we're not doing it? Oh, that must mean you love me. Well, what are you talking about? I didn't say all that. Well, that's that's the only, you know, 
thing that I require is love making. Like that's all I know how to do is make love. And so if you want to do that, that means you must love me. And they know they don't. And a good man, a good man, this is how you know a good man. A good man is not going to lie. He's not going to tell you he loves you when he doesn't. Now, now the other guys, they'll lie. Oh, I do love you. I do love you. I have feelings for you. That right there is telling you everything you need to know. If a man is willing to lie to have sex with you, that's not a good man. That's not. But y'all, y'all need to check out that interview. A lot of y'all, especially the women, y'all need to listen to that interview. You need to have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. And you need to take notes. Okay? Because he dropped some, I'm talking, and like I said, this stuff that I've been hearing, I've been hearing it from my granddaddy. I've been hearing it from my daddy. I've been hearing it from my male cousins, my two brothers, all of my uncles. I've been hearing this. I have men in my life. I have men in my life that don't want nothing from me. They don't want nothing from me other than my my good welfare. And so many women today don't have that. Uh, Dr. Umar was on Hardly Initiated. I want you to go to YouTube and check out the Hardly Initiated podcast, Dr. Umar's interview. It is an absolutely fabulous interview. You need to check it out. I do not agree, as I said at the top of this uh, live, I do not agree with everything that he espoused. I do not agree with everything that he said. But the things that I do, I will be reposting today. And women need to watch it. And you need to, to, to watch it from the sense of, He's your daddy. He's your uncle. He's your grandfather, right? He's a man that, you know, don't want nothing from you. You know, and like he said, every woman should experience a man's unconditional love. It breaks my heart to think that many women have never experienced that because that's all I've had. That's all I've had my whole life is a whole bunch of men that didn't want nothing from me. Didn't want no sex from me. Didn't want no money from me. My dad is 81. And if I try to take my dad out to dinner right now and pay for dinner, what are you doing? Why are you reaching for the check? <laughs> like, I kid you not. It is insane. Like, that's all I know is, is good men who want to take care of me, masculine men who don't want to use me, don't want my body, don't want my money, don't want me mothering them. Like, that's all I know. And it just breaks my heart that there are millions of women who've never experienced that. It's heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. I've never, wow. I've just, like I said, it blows my mind. But we have to get back to basics. Ladies, please, please shut the store down. Shut the store down. Like, unless that man is willing to give you a taste of true love, true love, investing in you, cultivating you, getting to know you, like not just your favorite color, your favorite food, like tell me about your childhood. Tell me about, you know, like seriously. No, it's not an even exchange. It's not. And gentlemen, y'all feelings might have gotten hurt, but I'm going to speak truth. I'm going to speak truth to you. Okay. Uh, I've had a lifetime of unconditional love from brothers, uncles, cousins, and my natural and spiritual fathers flow. Good. You're lucky. You're one of the lucky ones. You are one of the lucky ones. How can you say you have men that do things for you and want nothing in return, but also say they don't want you to mother them? I'm not sure I understand the question. The men in my life, the daddy, the grandfathers, my uncles, my two brothers, all of my male cousins, like they live to serve. And remember, we're all coming from a totally different generation, totally different time. But they live to serve. They truly believe they were put on this planet to serve the women in their life, the women, the children, the animals in the planet. They truly believe that. And they don't, they don't expect me to mother them. They don't expect me to caretake them. Like they, they run their lives. They manage their lives. They get their jobs. They write their interview, their, their resumes. They get their car fixed. They, you know, they run their life. And, and they also are a servant to me. And guess what? 
because of that, because of that dynamic, it is so natural and so normal for me to want to be a positive feminine essence in their life. So I've tried to pay for my dad's meal. I've tried to do things for my dad. When my dad needs a favor, he's out of the country right now. And if he needs something done here, I do it without question. I've tried doing stuff, but like I said, you know, just keep in mind, we come from a totally different generation. My dad is like, nope, I got you. That's how it is. And he may ask for a favor here and there. I cook for my father. I do things. I do a lot of things for him. I've gone over there and, you know, cleaned up, picked up his mail. I do a lot of things for him. But again, you all live in a transactional, you know, error. You live in a transactional error. You're looking to give to get. I don't come from that. Everything I do for my father is out of love and care and respect and honor. And everything my father does for me, the same. So it's not transactional. But see, people in today's culture, y'all don't understand that. Y'all just, y'all, everything is transactional. It seems inconsistent for men to act like fathers to women, but women shame men for wanting women to act like mothers. The only man that acts like my father is my father. So we're, you're confused, sir. I don't expect my man to be my father. I expect him to be my man. So you, I don't know what part of the conversation you came in on. I did not say that. My father is my father. My grandfather is my grandfather. I, do, I never expect a man I'm dating or married to to be my father. He is my man. He is my husband. But I do not expect him to be my father. That isn't healthy. Okay, wanting that type of relationship with your romantic partner is unhealthy. It speaks to your trauma. It speaks to your brokenness. I'm a grown woman. I come together with a grown man and together we have a union. I don't expect him to be my father. I don't know where you got that that part of the conversation, but no, I expect my father to be my father. And thank God I have one. And my father is still alive. My brothers are still alive. My uncles are still alive. My cousins are still alive. So that relationship is, like I said, they're just, they're servants. They're servants in my life, just as I do for them. That is the most natural, normal thing in the world. But like I said, today's era, you all don't get that. You all are transactional. If he don't do this, I won't do that. Or if she don't do this, I won't do that. That's a transactional relationship. I'm going to show up. I'm going to be nothing but love. I'm going to do what I believe God has put in me to do. And that's it. I have boundaries. I have standards. So I'm not going to let anybody take advantage of me. But honestly, my whole reason for wanting to be married, my whole reason for wanting to partner with a good man is because I'm so full of love. Like I need some place to put it. <laughs> like I need somewhere for it to go. Like, I can't eat all these meals by myself. I can't, I can't enjoy this clean home by myself. I can't, I, I got all this to give. And I, I would like to find somewhere to give it. <laughs> like, that's my whole reason. But see, y'all don't know about that. You don't know about that. Whenever I see my dad, he always takes me to get something to eat, fills my gas tank up, and gives me some money to put in my pocket when I'm leaving and I'm 52. That's a father. That's the same father I have. That's the same father I have. And honestly, it's the reason why that a lot of men, they say, the first thing they say to me is, you got a daddy. <laughs> like, I've had so many men that I've met and tried to date. They're like, you got a, re you got a relationship with your father. <laughs> that, like, that's the first thing they say. Because you can tell the difference. You can tell the difference. A woman who knows and loves her father has a relationship with her father. And, my, and how about this, y'all? My relationship with my father is not perfect. My father has let me down. My father has disappointed me. But I thank God that I have one. I thank God that we've worked through all of that. So my, my relationship with my father is not perfect. And, and you, it, it don't have to be for you to get value from it. Okay? So I miss those things from my father is both to see. So, yeah. Mm. But ladies, we got to do the inner work. You got to do that inner work. I implore you to do that inner work because if you don't, I mean, it's just a whole host of broken, traumatized men out here 
that's just waiting for you. They just waiting to take advantage of you. They just waiting, you know, to pull the wool over your eyes and take advantage of you. But you are responsible for doing your own work. And if you did not have a father or if your relationship with him is not good, you can find a father figure. You know, maybe you can find a father figure, maybe a friend of yours father. I And that's that's another thing. Let's not even talk about all the friends I have and their fathers like they speak into my life. It's crazy. Like I said, 80%, I always tell people this, 80% of the men I know are good. 80% of them. I have not really run across too many bad men. I have not run across too many crazy, bad men trying to take, I just haven't. I just haven't. That That's my worldview. And I know a lot of people push back and say, well, I've never met a good man. I've never had a good... That's, I, I, my heart breaks for you. My heart really breaks for you because I can't even imagine living in this world and, and not having one good, positive male role model. That's really, really sad. And and likewise for the men. All these men, are all these women are crazy. All these women are bad. All these women. Wow, that's so sad to me that that's what you think, that you've had not one good female role model. Most men are good, I agree, but are women attracted to those type? So this is what I'm going to say about that. I've always validated men when they when it comes to the point of because we all as people are so traumatized. I think that's what it is. Women are so traumatized now that they see good men as boring. They cannot be sexually attracted to good men. Um, their, their amygdala doesn't light up their body doesn't respond to healthy men anymore. Like if a man is not treating them bad, cussing them out, slapping them around, using and abusing them, their body doesn't even feel anything. They are numb to a good, healthy man. And, you know, that's, it's sad. But that's why healing is is needed today. Because, you know, I give a man three dates so if I don't feel anything on the first date, I go out again, and then I go out again. I have some phone call conversations. And remember, y'all, this texting, that ain't that ain't what's up. You got to talk on the phone. You got to meet in person. You got to talk over FaceTime. But yeah, if we go out on three dates, and I really don't, and for me, it's not a, even about a spark. I'm not looking for a spark. I'm looking for, am I curious about you? Like, am I curious to know more about you? Do I ask you questions? Do I want to know the answers to those questions? That's how I know I like a man. I have to genuinely be curious about him. I have to genuinely have an interest in him. And if I don't, like, if we're not together and I don't care what you're doing, that's a sign to me that I'm just, you know, there's no chemistry or connection there. But if I don't feel that, if I don't feel any curiosity towards you or what you're doing or where you're at or what, you know, that to me is what speaks volumes to me. There's no connection and there's no chemistry. I do need to have that in order to build something else. So just understand that. Um, I think the hard part is that the smaller percentage have been resounding. Yeah. I mean, they, woo, they loud. But that's our society now. The bad women are the loudest women. Right. The bad men are the loudest men. They're 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 the extroverts. They're out here on social media and they're showing everything and doing everything and talking all crazy. Yeah. And and the and the good ones are more introverted. The good ones are not posting everywhere and all of this stuff. But that's why I'm speaking out. I am by nature introverted. But I said to myself, I'll be darned if I let these bad people out talk me. I'll be darned if I let these bad people post more than me or or put stuff out more than me. Like, that's not going to happen. We need light in the world. We need righteous people in the world, and they got to stand up. So I'm always talking to other righteous people about that. We have to stand up. The people who have healthy relationships and healthy marriages have to speak up. They have to advocate for marriage. All right. He says, as a man, I agree there are more good women than not. But the problem is that they surround themselves with the toxic ones and it's hard to differentiate. It isn't hard, sir. It's not. It's not hard to tell a woman that got some sense in her head. As I said earlier in this live, if you have an, that kind of problems, you're an idiot. It's not hard. All you do is take sex off the table. All you do is see what her relationship with social media is like. All you do is look at what she wear, 
what she watches. It's not hard. If she's watching nothing but uh, reality TV, if she's dressed inappropriately, if you're saying, hey, I just want to get to know you, I want to see what the vibe is, and you take sex away, and she calls you gay, she says, what's wrong with you? It don't work, and it, there you go. That See? Simple. A woman that you will not have sex with. If she flip out and call you all kinds of gay, there you go. Because people who are healthy are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> like, I, and, and they will keep dating you. They will keep going out. They will keep checking your vibe. But if, oh, you got to be, something's wrong with you because you're not trying to sex her or coming on to her. And remember, you can show sexual interest without having sex. That's what I do. I show sexual interest. I'm just not having sex with you. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to smile at you. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to put my hand on your knee. I'm going to hug you. I'm going I'm to hold on a little longer. I'm going to kiss you. I'm not having sex with you, but I'm going to show you my sexual interest. I'm going to let you know I'm a sexual person. And, and, and when everything aligns the way it should, sure. But mm -mm, you don't got to be doing all of that. No. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so gentlemen, y'all just like I said, I, I'm not trying to offend, but y'all just dumb if you can't if you can't tell the difference between a good woman and a not good woman in 2024, that's your problem. That's on you, because to me, it's not hard. Every male friend I have, I look and look. This is how I vet them, y'all. Every male friend I have, I have game night at my house every quarter. And they bring, and look, the last one, he said, Anita, we was out before the game night. The girl cut up in the restaurant so bad we got put out. She ain't even make it to the game night. And he was like, yeah, I, I couldn't even bring her here for you to vet her because she got put out of the place we was in acting a fool. I said, well, there you go. <laughs> it's not hard. It's not hard. But the male friends I have, I have game night. They bring them to my house. And I look, I talk to them. I ask them questions. Oh, can you come in here and help me in the kitchen? What? Why can't, uh, mm, here we go. And look, based on the answer to the questions, and look, whenever they be answering the questions all crazy, I look over at my friend like, mm. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you heard that answer to the question. I hope you saw how much she drank tonight. I hope you saw how loud she got. I hope you saw her flirting with these other men in here. Like, it's not hard. Y'all are just not smart. Sorry, you're not smart. It's not hard, especially in 2024. And fun thing is that's not what men are attracted to. Yeah. Nope. Big facts. Or at the very least, she will let you know her desire for you is there, but respect and give you the space to lead. Exactly. Like, I'm all over a man, but I'm just saying, mm, I'm not quite comfortable yet. I'm not quite ready for that yet. I do find you very attractive. And you can best believe, you know, when, when everything aligns, okay, you know, okay, but that don't mean I got to sleep with you. I can show my sexual interest to you in other ways and not have sex with you. And I do. And I do. And guess what? That is a way a man is going to gauge sexual compatibility. That and having conversation. But y'all don't want to talk about sex. Y'all want to have sex, but you don't want to talk about sex. That's a big red flag. The good men don't leave enough mystery for women to be curious about them. Showering women with admiration and gifts just for breathing is why women pass on the good guy. Oh, Lord. Right there. But see, the good guy is the Mr. Nice Guy. He's the Mr. Nice Guy. Remember, the Mr. Nice Guy is going to give all the attention and validation and the gift. Right. That's the Mr. Nice Guy. He's going to get burned. He's going to get burned. Nobody asked you to be a nice guy. We asked you to have boundaries and standards just like women do. So, nope. Start, you know, letting a woman get to know you, not your wallet. Let her get to know you. And there's so many little teeny ways, little teeny things that a man can do that shows his love and care for a woman that isn't based on having a lot of money and any of that. And that's all you have to do is seek out those things. Ask another woman. Ask another woman all those little ways that you can show that I'm really feeling you. I really like you without spending a bunch of money. Uh, I love communicating sexual interest minus the sex. That's for the grown and sexy. Agreed. It is not hard. 
It is not hard. Like, I, I don't ask that women, don't let him touch you and don't let him get known. Like I said, if you feel in him that you got to know yourself, you got to know how far you can go before it's going to go too far. I know myself. That's why you're not coming to my house. That's why you're not coming in after the date. That's why I'm not going to your house, because I do know myself. Now, Nita is a sexual person, okay? I do have sexual needs. So that's why I have proper boundaries for myself, because I know what's going to get me in trouble and what ain't going to get me in trouble. OK, so I'm going to abide by those boundaries for myself because I know myself. And so I know what boundaries to set up so I don't go too far. So I don't pass, you know, and then look, you got men out there that will say, well, I, what? that's just stupid. If you know you want to do it, why not just do it? Because you're not my man, <laughs> because we're not married, because you don't love me. Like, you do understand the difference between the spirit and the flesh, right? Just because the flesh want to do it don't mean you should do it. The spirit, the, the rational mind, the logical mind is smart enough to say, Anita, it don't matter what your body is saying about this dude. You don't know him. He's not your man. He's not your husband. But see, y'all, that's all you think about is the flesh. Well, if you want to do it, just do it. That's called gratification. And I know how to delay gratification. I'm looking for long-term satisfaction. I'm not looking for just tonight. See, that's the difference between me and you. But the men will tell me when I say, yeah, my body may want to do it. My body may like your body. My, you know, I may be feeling you. Well, just do it. Just do it then. That's not good for my heart. That's not good for my soul. That's not good for my spirit. That's why. So... Y'all check out that interview. I'm going to get going. I got to get in here. I don't. I have no idea what time my first appointment is. It could be at 1 o'clock. It could be at 5 o'clock. I kid y'all not. I got up this morning, and I've been running around ever since. Um, I had to go to the bank because the bank was closed yesterday. I just been ripping and running, ripping and running. Um, so I don't know what time my first appointment is. I really don't, but I know I got to get off of here. And I want you to check out Dr. Umar's interview on the Hardly Initiated podcast. It was so many good, good, good gems in there. I mean, ladies, I need y'all to please watch that interview. So much truth. So much. Like I said, anytime a man and ladies, please listen carefully. It is a very rare man that is going to tell you to wait to have sex with a man. That's a very rare man. You got um, R.C. Blakes is going to tell you that. Your daddy, that right, R.C. Blakes, it could be your spiritual father. He going to tell you that. Tony Gaskins going to tell you that. He can be your spiritual uncle. Find you a good male role model, okay? And you don't have to know him personally. It could be a Tony Gaskins. It could be a R.C. Blakes, okay? What's the other gentleman's name, him and his wife? Um, Oh, man, I, I can see his face so clearly. I can't think of his name. He could be your spiritual uncle. It's a lot of great guys out here. It's a lot of great men out here that would love to be your spiritual, you know, male mentor. OK, and but they're going to tell you the truth. They're going to tell you to close your legs. Stop sleeping with these men. OK, require more. And remember, requiring more is not just about money. It's not about finances. It's about heart. It's about time and energy and effort. That's how that's that's how a man truly invests in a woman. It's not about money. Y'all keep making it about money. You keep making it about buying stuff and taking you places. No, he has to invest time, energy, and effort. He has to invest his heart. And you and guess what? You gotta invest yours too. You gotta invest your time, energy, and effort in him. But it's a lot of like I said, it's it's a rare man that's gonna tell you that. Because most men, 95% of men. I'm not going to tell you that. They're not going to open their mouth and tell you to keep your legs closed because it benefits them. It benefits them for you to have sex with them. That is the most logical, rational thing that I can share with you in this moment. Why do you think all these men want you to shoot your shot? Why do you think all these men want you to serve up your vagina on a silver platter? It benefits them. They're all but guaranteed an orgasm by having sex with you. And they're going to get that release and they're going to release that trauma and all of that stress and all of that stuff in you. They're going to get up like a superhero. 
And they're going to use all that feminine power and that feminine essence that they just got from you to go out there and tackle the world. It benefits them. Especially the men that ain't married to you. Especially the men that are not investing in you. Especially the men that are not doing nothing for you. It 100% benefits them. I can't put it no plainer. I can't. It don't make sense. The math is not mathing. I don't want no high body count women. I'm out here making high body count women. So please, please, please. And y'all, I'm waiting for this podcast episode that I was on to come out next week. And I'm hoping it speaks to the younger women. Please, please, younger women, please close your legs. Please stop giving your, you know, giving your ex a pass. Please stop your baby daddy. Well, I, that's not a new body. Stop taking anybody. Okay? Close your legs. Do the work. Heal yourself. Heal your heart. Okay? Find your validation within yourself. That's why these men online that love to come for me and they look, it's the ageism. It's the, it's the this. It's the that. Oh, I see that gray. I see this. Oh, you this, you this age, you hit the wall. Don't nobody want you. I don't care about them men. <laughs> like, can you see the, the, the care less on my face? I don't care about them. They ain't make me and they can't break me. As Dion say, you ain't make me. You can't break me. Okay. You don't have to want Anita. Anita want Anita. Anita loves Anita. God love Anita. That's it. See, and once you got that, there ain't a man on earth. There ain't a man on earth that can strip you of that. Understand that. That's what I wish I could download inside of the heart and mind of every woman on the planet. Love yourself. Want yourself. Validate yourself. Know what God says about you. Once God has your back, once you know Jesus died on a, a horrible death on a cross for you, ain't nothing no earthly man can ever say to you again. That is feminine power. And you need to walk in it. Have a great day. As always, stay open to love.